Hi everyone! Now the idea behind this video was to get a, a quick build in before I go to Telford. A fairly small, simple kit. And I want to get one in before Telford because I've got some stuff to do after Telford. And if I didn't do anything between that and Telford, then it could be a month and a half before I uploaded another build video. And I didn't want that. But it doesn't matter how small or simple a kit may look, it turned out to be a real saga. Now, it's never the kit's fault. Never. It's always the modeler. You can't blame a bit of plastic. As much as we like to, you can't. So it was a real saga, as you'll find out. Also, while I'm here, uh, there was a few comments on the Skyvan video about uh, homemade decals. Uh, some people were interested in a, a video just on that. Uh, I thought I covered it well enough, but obviously not. Now, if you're interested in seeing how homemade decals are made, then let me know in the comments. But there has to be enough people there to want that. Because if there isn't, then I'll just continue on with more builds. So let's take a look at this poor 146 I struggle to build. Now I've had this kit for many years and know what a beautiful little kit it is. The recessed detail is absolutely superb. Really suits its scale. Only one option here, and a very unusual one at that. The decal sheet, the British Aerospace logo isn't the best. Not many plastic parts in this kit, but what there is are beautifully detailed. So once again, I've cleaned most of the parts up, except for the fuselage and the wing parts. I've left the tabs on. I've just made sure that the parts fit together nicely. Those tabs can be cleaned off when these parts are assembled. One thing I noticed very quickly, and I, I didn't realise, is that there are no cabin windows. It seems the modeler has to solve that issue himself. Wings are a nice fit. I've done my usual process with the landing lights and the nav lights, protected as much detail as I can and then filled in with some squadron putty. Once that's dry I shall sand these areas flush. The nacelle and pylon assembly. Now I've done a bit of dry fitting and I think I can assemble this area without adding the fan blades or the exhaust yet, which just will make things easier when painting.
144 scale, the undercarriage is nicely detailed, if a bit fiddly. Now as well as no cabin windows, there is no cockpit neither. So I need to make and add a rudimentary cockpit. I want to add some figures to this model. Pilots maybe. My first effort fit against a fuselage with no issues, but it was a little undersized. So by adding a few millimetres to the width, it seems to have done the trick. No gaps. Now for my figures. I've sourced these. I had a choice of N-gauge railway figures. Now while these were very pricey, I think so, they're nicely detailed and painted. Now I'm hoping to get away with calling these test pilot figures. I could repaint them, but I'm not going to do a good a job as they are here. So a bit of cannibalisation with these figures, or two of them, and hopefully bring a bit of life to that cockpit. So I've painted the internals by brush and before I close the two halves up together I'm going to add my test pilots, not railway workmen, okay? I'm also very very sorry to the company I had to cut up such nice figures, but needs must. So I've just added a couple of blobs of PVA glue, just so I can adjust them, get them in the right position. Once I'm happy with that I'll fix them permanently with some super glue. Now for the cabin windows. I've had this stuff for many years. I think it came with the Airfix 172 scale Concorde, which was a big shock when opening the box and finding this stuff and no cabin windows in there as well. I've only ever used this stuff once and that was on the 148 scale Fairy Barracuda. Then there's this stuff, which I bought to glue canopies with. That didn't last long, but it says you can create windows from this stuff. We shall see. Then the third option is this stuff, just recently bought. So I've been experimenting and this is the micro crystal clear on some ladders. Then on this piece on the right is the deluxe stuff. And then on the left of that is the humbrol clear fix. So I'll let you be the judge of the results. I've made my mind up already. I also did a test for durability after they've been left to dry for a few days. You can also see my prod test, all very scientific. Closing up the fuselage halves, I nearly forgot to add the weight here, very important. Another very nice fit. So I don't know what you can see here, but I've cut out a hole or square on the top of the fuselage. I had to do that because the weight was rolling around inside. Why was it rolling around inside? Because I dropped the body on the floor, which of course dislodged the weight. Anyway, I'm going to use micro crystal clear here for the windows, but just to mask off the openings. I'm doing this because I don't want any overspray getting into the internals when it comes to doing the final paint job. And it's easy to do this while the wings are off. So as you can see, I'm new to this process, so stop laughing. Now with the crystal clear dry, I'm just going to rub off any bleed with a cocktail stick. Thankfully this stuff comes off really easy. I 
Another very nice fit. I'm making a start on painting the fan blades. I'm using Vallejo metal color, aluminium, and then using a flurry wash afterwards. Now these painted fan blades won't fall in, but they will go in with a bit of gentle persuasion. So here we go, and with a deep breath, because this is where it all goes pear-shaped big time. Now I don't prime my models, never have, never will. But I always make sure the surface is extremely clean, especially on the bigger parts. And in all my many years of modeling, I've never had this happen to me. So my first color went down with no problems. And then I've decided at the next stage to have the dark green next, then the light green. Without getting into too much detail about this, it's all about the way the camo is on the actual scheme. It has some sharp edges and it looks like they've applied actually the dark green first, then the light green, then the tan colour, with the way the patterns go on the surface. But that's by the by, because it's all academic anyway. So my train of thought is to use Mr Hobby's Neo to mask off and block the tan colour. Now this is tricky to apply, but loaded with an old brush, I can get a neat edge, or so I thought. A soft edge on a kit of this size would look toyish, so it needs to be a hard edge. So it all seems to be going so well. Ignorance is bliss, they say. Dark green applied. Dark green masked off. Now I just want to say that each coat of paint was left for a good day to dry before I applied this stuff. Now before applying the lighter green, I just sprayed one area just to see what it looked like against the dark green, just to make sure the tonal variations look right. Oh dear, how sad, never mind. I left the last coat a day or so to dry before pulling all the masking off. I was more worried at the time that the paint on top of the mask might dry and contract the mask underneath. But this wasn't the issue in the end. Here are some more horrifying images. Give you sleepless nights. Did me. It's also weird I've got these broken edges. I don't know why I've got those. So even if the paint had stayed on paint job would have been a failure anyway. So whatever I've done wrong, and it is me, I need to come up with another plan. I'm not going to let a bit of plastic or my ineptitude get in the way. I think I'm gonna go for a lie down. So after some time contemplating life, and with all that masking cleaned off, I've decided to strip all the paint off back to bare plastic. So I'm tackling this job in small sections, in small stages. It's easy to do that rather than looking at it as an overall job. It seems stupid, but it was a real struggle to get the paint off the surface. Go figure. After a couple of passes and the bulk of the paint off, I've given the whole surface a rinse with some soapy water and then just let the plastic and model rest for a while. The next thing to do is to get rid of all that paint within those panel lines. And for that, there's a different chemical I'm using. So the paint is slowly coming out of those panel lines and it will take a couple of goes, but we are getting there. So as I said earlier, I'm not gonna tell you what chemicals I've used yet. I'll probably broach that in a video on itself, by its own. Now there is an automotive product you can use, but I needed a more controlled approach to this task. Now I haven't quite used the hammer, not yet anyway. I'm going to build 146 with just one colour over the surface. But to build that particular 146, I need to convert it to a 200. Or as they call it, a 200 QT or QC. Quick cargo, something like that. So I'm cutting in the places hopefully where the plugs are going to be straight. In other words, there's going to be no curvature to the plugs or sections that I'm adding. Well, 
One plus point is that I can fill the cabin windows in now. I'm going to create some decals to create those. Maybe that would have been an idea for the previous 146. I've spent some time cleaning the cuts and filling in the windows and those wing body fairing cuts. I also took the old mask off from the cockpit area just to see whether there was any fogging or any damage from the cleaning process. Thankfully, A-OK. -okay. So I've remasked that area again. So I've created a couple of plugs from plastic card. They seem to be the same length. I've used a circle template just to get the basic circle. This diameter isn't perfect, but it gives me a head start when gluing these to the fuselage parts. And then gluing from the top and working my way around, I can trim or fill when I get to the bottom. So both plugs fitted, and after a lot of dry fitting, I've limited the amount of work that will be needed to get these plugs flush with the outside surface. Not perfect by any means. All pieced together. Now this is taking some time to get this stage. Every time I sand, I need to airbrush and just check the surface for any imperfections. Sometimes I get it right, sometimes I don't get it right. I now have to go through the same process again and again. It's quite laborious. Now I needed to make some extra external parts for this uh, 146, uh, sensors, pods, and so on. Now because there are no real good drawings that I could find or are available, I had to make some quick sketches from various photographs. Not accurate, but at this scale, just good enough for visual representation. Now for the pods at the rear, I got a very good head start by using rockets supplied in the 148 scale Tamiya Skyrider kit. So I've added my main colour, a medium grey with a hint of light blue. Then Vallejo's aluminium is next. And then lastly, a Tamiya White. Now the decals are next, and I don't think I'm going to use any of the kit decals, I don't think. But the first thing I've done is prep the surface of the model by giving it a light sand and then rinsing it clean of any residue. Now for the pain barrier, my homemade decals. So a big part of the decals are the windows, and I've drawn these from an image of a tracing of the kit window openings. I also noticed that there are different window layouts either side of the fuselage, I hope. If you want to see how these homemade decals are approached, application and cutting them out, then see my Skyvan build. A bit more in depth there. So with any residue wiped off the decals, I've sealed the paint and the decals in with a couple of coats of Tamiya satin varnish. 
So I left that to dry thoroughly for a few days. After the issues I had with the paint on the surface, I'm a bit tentative about masking the surface, but that's what I've done. I need to pick out a few panels to add some tonal variation to the surface. Now looking at photographs of the 146, it's quite a broken up surface, but once again at this scale, less is best. So just picking out a few areas. Next thing to do is to add a panel wash. And I don't know whether to use a Flory's Dark Dirt Wash or make my own, because ideally I could do with a dark gray wash. So I've gone for the homemade wash. I've mixed a dark blue gray. I've used some really cheap watercolor paints mixed with a mild shower gel, just to break the surface tension of the mix. Now I can't give you any ratios here. It's just a, a gut reaction, a gut feel. But it's all about experimenting, remembering that some products may affect the surface of your paint. Now I'm applying this carefully, also remembering that any bleed may stain the surface, depending on whether it's got a gloss, satin or matte finish. Leave that to dry and then it's wiped off with a damp cloth or with your own breath. So I've sealed everything in as a final coat with this stuff. And I'm just gonna put it aside to dry for a few days. So I've got all my parts together now, ready for the final assembly. Hopefully no glitches. I won't be showing you this being put together, but there will be some final photographs. Now this is a beautiful kit. Simple, but the surface detail is sharp and refined. Now yeah, there's no cabin windows, and lack of copper area, which can be forgiven in this scale maybe. But I do remember an aftermarket product where they supplied the decal windows and the canopy area. So I hope you like the build and the end results. And I want to thank you for watching. And I do hope to see you for the next video.